I'm an attorney for Sheriff Rodella. Mr. Bowles represents Tommy Rodella Jr. Uh, just by way of background, let me start. So this indictment, as you know, is dismissed against Mr. Rodella Jr. Okay. We gotta put these on. Or? No, you're fine. They just said the top. Okay. okay. With a melodious voice, I guess, yeah. like yours. <laughs> okay, Mr. Bowles, just tell us what happened today. You know, today the uh, United States Attorney made the decision to dismiss the indictment against my client, Mr. Rodella Jr. Very pleased that he made that decision. time frame in which the indictment was dismissed, a week and a half, tells you one thing. There was no case. There was no case from the beginning. There is no case now. And it took them arresting a man, putting him in jail, putting him through what he's been through, and then belatedly looking at critical records that the grand jury never saw to dismiss the case. Our soldiers, like him, our sailors, our Marines, who fight for our freedom should have at least as much due process as an average citizen. Mr. Rodella Jr. didn't get that. Uh, the United States Attorney didn't look at key records. The grand jury didn't see key records, and there was no case. This should have never been charged. That being said, we are glad it's it's now that they have now moved to dismiss. Would those records actually have been available to the FBI? I mean, those are medical records that you're talking about, and those are protected by HIPAA. Yeah. Absolutely. They could have subpoenaed, they could have requested that my, myself on behalf of Mr. Odella Jr. agree. If they had thought there was any exculpatory information, I would have agreed to that. I would have talked to my client about it. I would have gladly released those to spare him the, uh, the indictment the loss of his good name and reputation, and to keep him from being charged in this case. I would have gladly agreed to that. They never asked me. Um, what, just, what do you think just so far? I know you talked about there was no case, there's nothing here to um, indict him. What did you think initially when they did indict him? Well, it was outrageous. Um, if you look at the state police reports, you look at all the evidence in this case, you consider his medical background, his military service, you consider that he had a traumatic brain injury, and you look at the standards required to be proved on the mental state, this was never a case that should have been brought. And the United States Attorney, unfortunately, belatedly realized that. Would you say he suffered from PTSD? PTSD and a traumatic brain injury for his military service. Where? In Kosovo. What was his rank? And when was he discharged from the military? How long did he serve? You know, I don't know those answers, Scott, but I can get those to you. Was Army Bell? Yes. Why do you think the uh, government rushed to an indictment? That's a very good question. I think uh, Mr. Gorenz can address some of that. I think there is a definite feud or definite um, uh, bias by the United States Attorney against the sheriff, and I think that carried over into charging his son. Unfortunately, his son was wrongly charged, and, and he should never, never have been indicted, and the sheriff is too. And I think we're going to see next, uh, when Mr. Gorenz wins this case, that the entire case was wrongly charged. I have to ask you, he was a reserve deputy, correct? Yes. How, um, in this case, he's not able to understand intent, yet he's able to be a reserve deputy? Well, it's two different things. Um, the law in a special intent crime, specific intent crime, requires the highest level of mental state. Um, you have to specifically and willfully intend to commit a crime. That's different than doing your job on a day-to-day -day basis as a deputy. Uh, it's, it's two different mental states. Th those don't equate to each other. We should point out, and I think the government is now realizing all kinds of evidence wasn't presented to the grand jury. One, and Mr. Bowles would have been filing motions, he, I'm talking about, Thomas Rodella Jr. did not become a special deputy until after this event. Uh, that makes it hard for him on March 11th when he was returning with his father from submitting his father's candidacy, uh, his, his petition, to run for sheriff of Rio Riva County. That happened on that day. 
You can pull from the Secretary of State. They were up, they, the sheriff and his son, at 4.02 to file those papers. They were returning that afternoon. The sheriff, being very diligent about ethical obligations, did not take a county vehicle to do a personal political run from Española up to Rio Riba. Uh, you can look at that at the Secretary of State's website. On the way back, they encounter Mr. Tafoya. Uh, Tommy Jr. was not a deputy sheriff and could not by law have ap uh, acted under color of law. This motion to dismiss, which it's nice to now acknowledge his great service, I think is based on many, many things. And uh, many things that weren't, as you, there was an article about the search warrants that the FBI presented to a magistrate. Did they present, and I've handed out here today, the actual photograph to the magistrate of, of this gentleman when he was booked into the jail, which clearly shows he was never abused? Did they present the booking information where he never said I was injured? Did they present the FBI uh, DNA analysis, which completely refutes his assertion that a badge was used as a weapon to scar his face? No, none of that happened. Uh, this indictment was half-baked and half-cocked, and it's been half-dismissed. I anticipate that the rest of it will be dismissed before a trial on September 22nd. Uh, and if not, as I said, I, I have today, I mean, it hasn't gone out, I'll get a copy, a second Hyde letter to the U.S. Attorney showing why this case was brought in bad faith. By virtue of a meeting on May 7th, which was attended by as I understand it, 10 law enforcement personnel from the federal side and six individuals from Rio Riva County. And the sheriff said, I will not deputize fish and wildlife agents to be my deputies so that they have state law enforcement powers. The U.S. attorney threatened, and I want to underscore that word, threatened the sheriff with arrest and prosecution on that date. I have it from multiple individuals, and this indictment, he made good on it. Unfortunately, uh, in America, you get a trial, you know, your peers to decide that, and this, the train wreck is, uh, and it will be a train wreck for the government. As you know, Mr. Bowles and I used to be federal prosecutors. Um, I only served 14 years, Mr. Bowles served for a very long period of time, I don't know how, and I can tell you, I know a train wreck when I see one. And uh, this is one, and I hope, and the reason this Hyde Amendment is being filed is that the sheriff and his son have had to pay our fees. And at the end of the day, there is a federal law that says, when you bring cases like this and you lose, you get to pay. And we uh, very much, and that's why these pleadings are being filed, just like in that Reza Alla case, where the government ended up paying approximately, six, Seventy thousand, seventy-five thousand, yeah. eighty thousand dollars for that debacle. Same office. They're going to pay a lot more in this one. What happens to your case now? Can Rodella Jr. testify since the charges are dropped? And if he does testify, will it hold any weight? Uh, he, he absolutely can testify, and I think it's going to hold tremendous weight, um, b both based on his background, based on what he's done for our country. And based on the fact the United States Attorney uh, himself recognized the charge was not valid, um, the United States Attorney has now got on record moving to dismiss, saying this is not a crime. He is not guilty of this crime. And the jury's possibly going to hear that. But they're not necessarily <laughs> saying that a crime wasn't committed. They're saying that because of his mental ability, that they can't prove that he knew intent. That, that's absolutely incorrect. They're saying a crime was not committed. To prove a crime, you have to prove every element of that crime. If you do not prove every element, there was no crime committed. And that's what they're saying. You, you can't say there's some background of misconduct. That's not a crime. You have to prove every element of it, and now they've acknowledged that they can't do it. So are you saying that that's going to acknowledge that the crime was not committed either by the sheriff? Correct. In fact, that's why the United States Attorney is, is agreeing to dismiss count one of the indictment today. They're acknowledging there was no conspiracy committed. There was no crime of conspiracy committed. So you got to ask yourself the question, why was that ever brought? This is a week and a half after. 
It's not like we're three months down the road and learning all kinds of new information nobody had access to. This is a week and a half after the charge. I would like to point out, and it was publicized earlier, that this U.S. Attorney's Office investigated the sheriff on unrelated conduct, and that proceeded, because I represented him, for the better part of a year. No charges were ever brought because there was no case. And uh, I can release the letters that went off to the U.S. Attorney's Office that very thoroughly documented that. In this case, uh, the U.S. Attorney decided to arrest these people, the sheriff and his son, uh, notwithstanding that there were lawyers. They wanted the public you know, humiliation of it, what's called a perp walk, bring them in in cuffs, and then move to detain not, not Mr. Bowles' client, but my client. They wanted to keep him in jail. And initially, there were detention motions filed on both. And you have to ask, in this context, where they do all of these extreme things, a public arrest, uh, press conferences from the FBI and the U.S. Attorney, a move to permanently keep them in jail prior to trial, uh, and then a realization that they don't have half, uh, you know, they don't have a case against Tommy Jr. And as I'm pointing out, with stuff that I've released today, that I've just started to re uh, gather this information, none of this was presented to the magistrates that issued search warrants, nor to a grand jury. That's in bad faith. And you ask why, and the only answer is, when the sheriff said, I will not deputize so that I'm responsible for federal agents to act as my deputies with no accountability, and a threat was made, well, he made good on the threat. I'm looking forward to this trial, and I've never had a case where a federal indictment goes to trial 37 days after arraignment. I've never even heard of it, actually. Will you have Rodella Jr. testify in your case? Well, that's up to Mr. Bowles, because he's still represented by Mr. Bowles, but I will certainly seek uh, he is one of the eyewitnesses, as and a few, but um, yes, he, I'm going to be asking Mr. Bowles yes. to have him testify, and that will be a decision that he and his client will make. Did the sheriff tell, um, I believe it was Romero, is that his name? Uh, Tafoya, rather, sorry. Did, did the sheriff tell Tafoya that he was the sheriff from the beginning? He showed a badge, as you've seen. He uh, held himself out as the sheriff. Mr. Tafoya, who has three previous arrests, for not having a valid license, didn't have a valid license that day. You can see it right on the pictures from his car. He had a motive and a reason to flee. He didn't make a complaint until two weeks after having failed at the jail to say he was hurt. Did the sheriff call in that he was going after DeFoy? He was in pursuit of DeFoy? The sheriff was in a personal vehicle. His personal vehicle did not, for the reasons I stated before, his personal vehicle did not have a police radio. He called on multiple occasions to other deputies to tell him what he was doing and that this was law enforcement related for someone who he thought was impaired uh, either by drugs or alcohol or who had committed a crime by virtue of the way he was driving. Did he call before they stopped? Yeah, you'll get all the phone records. We got them all. He called multiple times before that he was in the midst of a pursuit of someone he thought had, well, who, who had violated the law. Other deputies were called as they were driving in terms of what was happening. Were, okay. were there deputies on the scene then at the traffic stop? I mean, does a person have to stop for an unmarked civilian car? Well, uh, when he, Mr. Tafoya, as he even acknowledged, did stop. The sheriff walked towards the car with badge in hand. He knew who the sheriff was. When the sheriff got to the window, he took off again. That was the basis of this alleged, quote, chase. But, I mean, it was a chase. You know, if there was a, if this person had uh, committed a murder and there's a body in the back of the trunk, uh, if he had raped a girl and is on the way uh, out of Dodge, wouldn't you expect your sheriff, who's on duty 24-7, to do something about that? Let's say you have someone who's drunk and he's driving completely impaired, which is a stop. You want someone to say, y you know what, I'm not in my uh, marked unit, uh, uh, just go on your merry way until there's great havoc in Rio Reba County. Is that what you want? I don't think so. And that's not the way this sheriff operates. You've touched on, both have touched on this a little bit. How, how will this affect the case against Rodella Sr.? Well, I'm not here to talk about that, but you're going to watch it unfold September 22nd, 37 days after this arraignment. I've highlighted some information today 
that I know was kept from a U.S. magistrate and that I believe was kept from a federal grand jury. Now we know, as Mr. Bowles has said, there's an, a lot of information was kept from this grand jury, but uh, I don't wanna speak about trial evidence because that will unfold in little less than uh, three and a half weeks. Who's the case assigned to? Judge Browning. That's it? Good. Thank you.